Gum, 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 gum. Hot sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce. I just burned my esophagus. My name is George Mose, and I eat hamburgers. I eat a lot of hamburgers. And I eat hamburgers so that I can learn about hamburgers and then teach you about hamburgers. I want you to be as excited about hamburgers as I am. What I'm about to show you is one of my favorite things from one of my favorite places. This is the gum cheese burger. Say it with me. Gum cheese burger. Gum cheese burger. It's not spelled the way you think it would be. The gum cheese burger. Got your attention, didn't it? Wait till you try this thing. If you're looking for a gum cheeseburger, likely you're at Sahara Coast in Columbus, Indiana. It's like a, a cheesy sloppy joe. It's not really a hamburger. Technically, it's in the hamburger family. Did it descend from the loose meat sandwich? Is it the original sloppy joe? Or is it a distant cousin of New York's famous chopped cheese sandwich? Whatever the hell it is, it is a perfect marriage of beef and cheese. Are you ready to go back in time? All the way back? 120 years? Let's do this! So, like the loose meat sandwich, we're gonna basically crumble beef. The difference is we're gonna be adding spices and a little bit of sauce to make it gummy or sticky. Gummy. Gum, we found out, is an old Dutch slang word for sticky. In Indiana, the sloppy joe is sometimes referred to as a Dutch hamburger. As a Dutch hamburger. Did you hear that? Did you do the math? Do the math. Do the math. That's the kind of stuff that excites me on Burger Scholar Sessions, is to put those things together. If you think we're done with this shit, no, you're wrong. I got plenty more of this shit up my sleeve. A little bit of olive oil, some diced onions, meat in pan. Gum, 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 gum. Gum, gum, gum. Don't splash. Fat draining. Ah, fuck. That's hot. No, don't touch that. Fucking idiot. No. What am I gonna. Oh shit, what have I done here? <laughs> Brain's broken. Brain's broken. Okay. Got it. Okay. I got a couple of spices here. This is chili spices, onion powder, garlic powder. You obviously need some salt in there. A little bit of salt to make it happy. And I'm going to add some water, kind of making a chili paste out of this, right? Sugar. You have to put brown sugar goes into the gum for sure. I'm almost positive of that. But I'm pretty sure that there is some molasses in the gum as well. Hot sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce. Worcestershire. See what's happening? It's getting sticky. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Oh. God damn it. Well, get the tide stick. The first thing you notice when you walk into Sahara Coast is that you're dressed incorrectly because no one <laughs> looks like they're from this century at all. And in the back of the restaurant, there's an original Welte Orchestrion player organ that is cranking out loud turn of the century music. Sahara Coast is full of treasures. I have a few of my own antiques and treasures, but you wanna see them? This is one of the very first 16 millimeter cameras. It's a Cine Kodak Model K. 1930. Awesome. It still works. Listen. Here, we'll crank it up. Here. You hear that? 20 years ago, when I made Hamburger America the movie, my friends at Ted Steam Cheeseburgers gave me a steaming box. How cool is that? Even little things inside, little, little trays for steaming meat and cheese. Oh, check it out. This is my original 1980s Santa Cruz bullet board, complete with black flag and Grateful Dead stickers. <laughs> And I was told by George Powell, don't ever ride that thing again. He's right, don't ever ride that again. Oh, and, oh, you know what this is? That's right, it's an R2-D2 piggy bank. 1977, a gift from my dad for Christmas. Back to burgers. Oh God, no, it's so hot. Mm, it's hot, good. Whew. Ooh, ow, that hurt going all the way down. <laughs> Shit, I just burned my esophagus. Oh yeah. The next step in the gum is to add cheese. We're gonna make a gum cheeseburger. Ready for this one? It's pretty basic. Cheese goes into the pan. That's it, cheese in the pan. What's gonna happen now though, cheese is gonna start to melt and make a mess. 
Into the toaster goes the bread. Good thing these, this is a very fast toaster, so. There we go. Shit, oh no, burning. Oh God, all right, okay. One piece of toast. There we go. Some ooh, gum cheese. <laughs> See how cool it is? It stays together. Second piece of toast on top. Oh my God. <laughs> Not a hamburger, but it's squarely in the hamburger family. If not the recipe, I'll tell you right now, that's pretty damn close. It's ridiculously good. Mmm. Woo! Oh! Mmm! Ah! That's good. It takes me back 120 years. We almost lost the Harakos, okay? One guy named Tony Moravec saved the Harakos from its imminent demise. After years of going into decline, the restaurant was a mess and the family sold the restaurant to Tony Moravec, the owner of a company called Boudreaux's Butt Paste. That's right, that guy. The guy that made every baby rash better. Is this not the American dream? A guy who makes a fortune on baby rash ointment and takes his money and saves an American soda fountain that happens to have an iconic hamburger sandwich on the menu. He should be honored by America. He is an American hero. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, that's how I feel, by the way. I'm sorry, I get a little, little, I'm shaking, I'm shaking. The guy didn't have to do that. He did not have to do that. It costs a lot of money. I don't think he'll ever make that money back. I think he's aware he'll never make that money back. But what he did though, he preserved a piece of America. You walk into Zaharikos, you're walking into Tony's dream. I'll see you next time when I connect even more dots in this crazy patchwork of hamburger history. I can't get enough of it. Hi, I'm George Motes from Burger Scholar Sessions. Don't forget to like and subscribe and watch more episodes right here. Somewhere here. Right here? Up in here.